Looking back at the garment I just discarded, it actually has another destination. I decided to drop it into the Venice clothing recycling bin, where it can begin a new journey as a donated second-hand garment. Venice is a charity store in Australia that accepts donations of pre-loved items in good condition, like clothing, toys, furniture, etc. The proceeds from their sales go towards helping the homeless. The reason why you always select second-hand clothes, can you tell us? It's sustainable and it goes towards better causes such as like church groups or organizations like Vinnie's. It's, I prefer to um, invest my money towards that than people that don't really need the money. I like rarely buy fast fashion um, unless it's like socks or underwear or like pajamas maybe. For kind of moral reasons that I don't want to participate in a fast fashion culture. But also, I think aesthetically it's more interesting. Like, if you kind of just like buy like what everybody else is wearing and all the trends, like, it's um, it's just a bit boring. Like, I think it's more fun and creative, like, sourcing specific, like, niche items in op shops. Due to charity orientation, the second-hand clothing Venice sale generally remains in its original condition and styles. This second-hand clothing store, which is very popular among young girls, seems to have a more exploratory approach to styles and aesthetics. This garment caught my attention. There is a Nike logo, but it's clearly not in the typical Nike style, right? So it's just a reworked stitch top. So it's different materials just stitched into one. Yeah. Is there a designer on this? A designer? No, there isn't. No, there isn't. I think people just handmade them. Who made them? Um, so we have a warehouse in Thailand. That's where we source all our vintage clothes. And the people that are employed there make these. Do you enjoy work here? I do, I love it. I love the vintage clothes. Um, fast fashion is a bit like oversaturated and people, brands like release a lot of items all at once and it's not that ethical. Vintage, it's definitely very ethical. It's like pre-loved um, items and they get sold for like a cheaper price, which I feel like um, fast fashion isn't like that. The prices here don't seem too expensive. All these fast fashion products, so the more a newer version of something, be it a clothing, be it a telephone, whatever, uh, I mean, it's obviously only increasing the waste that we have. And we need to put this waste somewhere. And when we put this waste somewhere, it creates carbon emissions, uh, green gas issues, uh, waste management issues, etc. Obviously, fast fashion industry or fast fashion or that everything, a newer version of everything is constantly coming up. This is not a positive thing for uh, people. There is a kilo sale market where second-hand clothes are priced by weight. The piles of clothes outside are priced at $20 per kilo. So many people shopping here. I am aware, I don't know if most people are aware or not, that like fashion is one of the biggest contributors of wastage in the world. And so like we see all these heaps of waste in countries. Uh, so like I think this idea, I actually came across this uh, concept on Instagram I saw an ad and I thought it was really interesting, this kilogram sale. Yeah, they're selling clothes by kilogram. That yeah, plus they're all thrifted. So I really like the idea and so we can in fast fashion stores. We just go and we like the stuff because there's such good lighting yeah. and, and all that. So we just buy. 
So I think there was much more conscious choice while dropping the book. Today I got this bag full of, it's, I've got some Adidas, Harley Davidson stuff, um, and it came to 120. 120? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's cheaper uh, as you expanded? Oh, one item I would have got for 120 anywhere else, so. So you yeah. think it's more cheaper? Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. The pieces are so much nicer and a lot of vintage clothes have better make anyway so they're going to last longer than something new which is more expensive and also we don't make much money we're both disabled so it's really helpful to be able to get clothes this way it's like the most affordable way for us to shop. Yeah. I couldn't resist joining them, but I noticed that some of them have stems. Clothes will have little stains on them, little holes, this kind of thing. But we actually have a website link that you'll find plastered around in there, where you can go and find tutorials on how to clean certain stains off things. You know, wipes, baking soda, whatever it is. The second-hand clothes indoors are a bit more expensive at $50 per kilo, but it seems to offer a better shopping experience. Weighing, paying, and shopping comes to an end. Uh, second hand products will be necessary also in the future, I believe, because as said, it is kind of uh, in decreasing the amount of waste we are producing. I fully understand and hear uh, economics saying like we, we need to produce a lot, there should be a lot of things that should be bought and sold, etc. to uh, make the economic life vivid. Yes, but there will be other ways to make uh, to make consumerism uh, less happening in the world because consumerism is costing us the pl planet now. For example, Elon Musk apparently, uh, his second idea is now after having bought uh, uh, with the new Tesla, Tesla, sorry, the new self-driving cars, he is planning to make them. So everybody who is owning a Tesla is going to be also an Uber owner because he plans uh, that you are going to have a Tesla, buy it, and then you will probably park, you, it will drive you to your office, and then that Tesla is going to work alone, on its own, as an Uber driver or something like that. So it's kind of, it doesn't mean uh, consumerism, or how should I say, it doesn't mean that uh, economic activity of consumption is not happening. It is happening, but with less resources, with res less depletion of uh, limited resources that we have on this blue planet Earth. This vintage market is placed in a large forgotten theater. An old theater now selling some old items. And here I am, a newcomer hastily carrying some modern photography equipment into this old venue, trying to capture some new artistic materials. I filmed an interviewee through the fabrics in the lens. She is stitching her fabrics, and I am stitching mine. My name is Carolyn. I sell vintage clothing, some new clothing. I sell vintage fabric, vintage bric-a-brac, um, vintage jewelry, some new things as well. Um, most of the fabric I sell is from about the 1940s to the 1980s. A lot of them have come from my own wardrobe. Um, I get my family, my friends, my partner, I get clothes from them. I look for pieces that would be my taste, so if they don't necessarily fit me, but I like finding things that please me and that I can sell to other people um, 
So I get to express my own creativity and clothing through other people. Most people have said they think I've got good prices, so I don't price it super cheap because I think most of what I've got is, is unique. Um, but I also try and make it affordable so that people will actually buy it. You know, I, I like to sell things, I don't want to have to take it all home. Um, but yeah, so that everyone gets a chance to, you know, maybe buy something that's unique for them. They're really beautiful quality, textures, colours, um, you know, because a lot of people used to sew their own clothes, so it was all made to last um, and, yeah, really stand up because they used to also boil clothing, so it was really had to endure all the, those kind of treatments. People who are confident in their style and things tend to not buy lots of things and they buy good things and they accessorise so they can change outfits. Um, and I think if you pay a bit more for um, a piece of clothing, um, you're more likely to try and look after it and keep it. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, you can change up an outfit just by putting a belt on or, um, you know, wearing a brooch or something like that. Um, it's, I, it's fun having lots of things, but we have so many choices. Like, I think we're over... Um, abundance of choices and it's it actually gets quite overwhelming so I think keep it if you can keep it simple and um, and buy things that are going to last you um, then you can spend a bit less and buy little things that will expand that wardrobe you don't need to have a huge wardrobe to do it when I was editing I find the graffiti on the walls of the forgotten theater is quite amazing but this shaky footage is the only one recording it. We probably didn't expect to include this shot in the final film, but who knows which shot will be recycled. Uh, we've got some clothes. Okay, sure, thank you. My name is Gloria. I'm a slow fashion content creator. I've been creating videos about slow fashion for four years now. I started with just restyling the clothes I already had in my closet, then I began to experiment with capsule wardrobes. A capsule wardrobe is basically a curated collection of clothing items that you can easily mix and match. I like to curate one for each season, this way I get to have hundreds of outfits for the season without having to shop for new clothes. For example, this is my fall capsule wardrobe. I have selected 35 pieces in total here. Most of the pieces have been in my wardrobe for years and are made of high quality natural materials. Some of them are secondhand and some of them are from sustainable brands. I think slow fashion is very inclusive because you can implement it right away just by wearing the clothes you already have. A lot of people shop fast fashion because it's affordable. What's more affordable than shopping your own closet? It's literally free. And with the money you save, you can then invest in high quality pieces that can last a long time. A lot of women nowadays are deeply affected by consumerism perpetuated by the media, like I once was. Never underestimate the power of the media. We're being sold on trends and beauty ideals. God forbid you're still wearing skinny jeans. That is so last decade. Since we're constantly being told what's in and what's out, what's cool and what's not, many people lose sight of what suits them, and most importantly, who they are. It's almost as if we're losing control over the clothes we put on ourselves. The clothes wear us, as opposed to us wearing the clothes. I think the purpose of slowing fashion down is to regain control over our clothes and ourselves, and to step off the hamster wheel of consumerism. Over here on the left are all my tops. Up here are my pajamas and thermal underwear. I freed up some space here, and these are my winter hats. Some people may ask, why do we care so much about fashion? Some may even go as far to say that fashion is frivolous and beauty is only skin deep. But if we look around us, beauty is everywhere. It encompasses art, music, film, architecture, and yes, fashion. I think wearing a beautiful piece of garment is almost as if I'm wearing a piece of art. It's the most intimate form of self-expression. My goal as a slow fashion content creator is to plant another idea into people's minds that beyond consumerism, there is another way that allows us to look good and do good at the same time. Walking down the street, you can't help but to be drawn to this shop.
my name is Sammy and I run the Rodrigo Lounge in King Street, Newtown. Um, I have been an artist all my life and I make jewellery, clothing, paint, um, upcycle, recycle, design things, sewing, everything. So yeah, the process is if I find something in an alleyway, <laughs> I'll wash it, I'll bring it into the studio sh shop and I will wing it. I will literally just look at what it is and chop it up and I don't sit down and do a drawing. But do the fabric or the materials bring you some uh, inspirations? Um, definitely older fabrics, vintage fabrics. Um, we also paint, we screen print, we do all of that stuff here. So um, I think a lot of vintage fabrics um, are much more interesting and the patterns are exciting and interesting. Um, things from the 60s that are psychedelic and so that stuff inspires all of us I think in here. I have a deep emotional connection with self-expression I guess um, because my parents were artists and we were encouraged to express ourselves with art and clothing and jewellery and hair colour and so I will literally be thinking at three in the morning in my sleep what I'm going to be wearing the next day. Um, I'm always thinking about it. I'm always thinking about how people look, what they're wearing walking down the street, how they express their, their gender, their sexuality, their, you know, for performance and costume. I'm always thinking about it. It's all I, I'm obsessed. <laughs> People come and tell me, oh, well, this is coming into fashion this season. And I say, well, go look at another store because I don't really, um, I don't really follow the fashions. I think something that's stylish, um, you know, that's, that's my idea of, of beauty is, is style and um, glamorous, something that is show-stopping. Um, if you look in the shop there's not a lot of plain things in the shop it's it's um, embellished and colorful it's got sequins um, and I also like if you know as fashion and self-expression there's you've got a platform so you can be political as well so um, yeah I don't really follow fashion I probably follow just style and yeah style and as long as it's used to be made with recycled things that's a Kodak film store. Let's go and have a look. They have varieties of second-hand cameras, and the owner has a lifelong passion for film. You have to take the tongue out, and then we cut the tongue off. We twin check it, and put two pieces of tape on it, and then we put it through the machine. And once it comes out of the machine, we then scan it, and we make it digital, I actually don't care about distinguishing between the new and the old at this moment. All I know is that I feel a connection to this place. To my mind or to my definition, consumerism uh, comes from the fact that the marketers once believed that the more and the better you provide as a product for the consumers, the better and help happier and more satisfied will, they will be. But actually it's not true. People do not get happier or more satisfied because they buy a newer version or better version of a product actually. So consumerism has this one aspect from consumer perspective is that if you have many new products, many new versions of it, and if consumers buy as much as they can, they get happier. This is the consumer perspective. And there is also the economy perspective of it. Of it. Traditionally, economics have believed that the more the consumer are buying things, the more uh, the economy will be alive and the more will be less uh, inflation and this and that. So the market and the businesses will survive and become rich, actually. So that's, it's going to kind of uh, increase the, um, you know, the, uh, the well-being of people. 
But that way of a consumerism is actually, first of all, it creates inequity because it's not everybody who is able to gain from this buying. It's only uh, those who can afford really buying proper products are going to have an effect, positive effect of that kind of consumerism. And instead, the consumerism in the long run is not sustainable, that way of consumerism for the uh, economic uh, viability either, because it's going to deplete our resources. Without any resources, we will not be able to, uh, we will not be able to, you know, like proceed in terms of producing important products or goods, uh, which are kind of more valuable than fast fashion products. Uh, my name's James. What's your dream for a living? Um, I'm a cowboy. How, how do I? Yeah. Just like Western America? No, Australian cattle. Yeah. yeah. I work with cattle, horses, and sheep. Yeah, we take, we take animals all around the world. Yeah. There's a lot of people around here who are, who are homeless. I'm not actually homeless, but they are friends of mine. So they help me out. Yeah. So I'm not actually living on the street. Yeah. I have a house. Yeah. I live on the street. Yeah. So you're friends with people who are homeless? But I don't, I don't have a friend who's I don't have any family, so I'm pretty free. If any one of these people, or all of these people, if we all think that same thing, we can easily make it so that there is no, no one is hungry, no one is thirsty, no one has to, no one has to sleep on the street. What kind of things you want to spend on? If I was very rich, what would I spend? Yeah. Oh, just. I'd just be happy to have a little farm and a few horses and a few cows. Yeah. yeah. You think that's the lifestyle you really want to be? Yeah. 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 That's it, man. Uh, do you prefer living in city? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like city? No. Yeah. If you heart is follow the farm, the nature. Yeah. Like <laughs> Not many people can actually say that they are free yeah. and can, can live like that. Some people are trying, but the way the way society is, how, how can you not be a consumer? Drink and a feed wasn't leaving. 